Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, I'm glad to be here today in person, and I'm grateful that you don't stay aside Ukraine and Ukrainians. There are 7,000 kilometers between Ukraine and Korea. But these kilometers will not prevent our mutual understanding. We are close. I have to tell the world what Ukraine is going through because of Russian attack. How children study in the bomb shelters. How people spend the night in the subway because of missile attacks. How no one knows where they wake up in their own bed in the morning or lie under the rubble of their house. To stop these horrors, we should explain to countries and people what it's like to see their hometown in ruins, what it's like to be frightened by loud noises because of a missile or a fighter jet. But I do not need to explain this to the people of South Korea. Because you know and remember what it is like to fight for your lives and freedom. Looking at beautiful Seoul today, it is hard to believe that it was once in ruins, just as the Ukrainian cities of Mariupol and Bakhmut now. That it was just subjected to deadly bombardment, just as Kherson now. And I want to tell you about this particular city because it has gone through everything that Seoul went through. Occupation, torture and repression of its residents, liberation. And now it's enduring Russian attacks every day. We have calculated that Kherson region is now shelled by Russia 360 times a week on average. 50 times a day. Imagine what it takes to live in this city, the city where there are 50 chances to die every day. I still see in front of my eyes Kherson supermarket and the market, bombed by Russians two weeks ago, with blooded visitors and staff. That day alone, more than 20 people were killed by Russian missile terror. I still see in front of my eyes a bus stop that was destroyed by a Russian air raid. People were just going to walk, but four of them were left lying there. I still see in front of my eyes six Ukrainian rescuers, people who are clearing mine traps left by Russians in the fields around the city every day. This group was recently killed by Russian shelling. But the next day, their colleagues came to work to continue clearing their homeland so that no one loses their limbs stepping on mines laid by the occupiers. How do you live in Ukraine under the constant threat of death? Korean journalists asked me the other day. And here I have another example from Kherson. The Russians recently shelled the station when a regular passenger train was departing. Its crew were wounded. But this train went on its way and arrived on time. It was greeted with applause. This is the image of the whole life of Ukrainians now. Every day, we risk being killed in our own homes at our own workplaces, but we do our work. Like the train, we have to keep going. I have to say that we are grateful to Korean people for sharing our pain and for all your support. And we are grateful to President Yoon for his recent words that humanitarian aid alone may not be enough when civilians are being killed. This is a wise insight. When there is a criminal in your house who has come to kill your family, humanitarian aid alone will not 
save the residents. The first thing to do is to stop the murderer. In the case of Kherson, it could be air defense systems. Technologically advanced and effective, like everything your country creates and produces. We also need to stop the murderer, Russia. That's why we say that we need victory, not an abstract ceasefire. Moreover, this is not only our grief and a threat not only to us. This is a violation of international rules of coexistence. An attack of one country on the other, disturbing precedent for everyone. And there is no longer some others worse in the modern world. A stone thrown creates ripples. If civilians are killed, it can happen anywhere. Therefore, those who are attacked have the right to defend themselves. They have the right to stop the violence. Today in Ukraine, not only the future fate of security in Europe is being decided, but also that of the entire world, the American, European, and Asian regions. Therefore, we cannot, we have no right to be a victim for the sake of others. We must win so that no dictator can blackmail neighbors with the nuclear weapons or impose his will on other states. So that no bigger neighbor thinks it has the right of power to offend the smaller one. You knew this much earlier than others from your own experience. I thank Korea for this understanding. At the beginning of my speech, I was talking about Seoul. I dream of seeing Kherson like this as well, as all the destroyed cities in Ukraine, restored, strong, flourishing, full of life, which is not threatened by anything. You once gained this right by showing that truth triumphs over force and aggression. Your example is one of those that inspire us. For Ukraine, Korea has always been a leader in technology and development, and it can now become a model of leadership in helping to return peace to the world. You can become a leader of humanity. And this is also our common value. We all want our people, our nations, to live. Let it be so. Thank you. Thank you for insightful speech, Madam First Lady Zelenska. Many must have sympathized with this message for peace. 네, 올레나 젤렌스카 영부인님 다시 한번 말씀 감사드립니다. 네, 평화를 위한 메시지에 분명 많은 분들이 공감하셨을 겁니다.